Hi, this is my review of Through Dungeons Deeper, a survival guide for Dungeoneers. This book contains a lot of pearls of wisdom to be better at surviving different uh, fantasy themed adventures. That is, this is for games like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Pathfinder, 13th Age, but I guess some things could be applied to other types of role-playing games. And even though the book is quite comedic, quite satirical in its style, there are actually a lot of useful tips and advice and guidance. So this is going to be very useful for beginner role players or even experienced ones. Sometimes we forget the basics and you will find some tricks that probably you were not aware of. And it's also going to be useful for dungeon masters and game masters because you never know what your players are going to attempt when trying to navigate those hostile environments that you create for them to feel challenged. Let's start talking about the quality of the PDF. Mm, my only criticism of the quality is that there are several typos throughout the entire document. They aren't, mm, they won't present obstacles when I'm trying to understand the content, but they are still there. Mm, somewhat uh, more present than other books that I have seen. And uh, the art, it contains very little art, just a few uh, pieces of stock art that you have probably seen in other old school Renaissance games and such. It's mostly about the text. The document is fully bookmarked and hyperlinked throughout the entire uh, PDF. Uh, in the different paragraphs, you're going to see clickable uh, numbers, to different uh, advice and tips that they offer. So it's going to be very handy when uh, reading a paragraph and it makes a reference to some other types of um, advice and useful information. You just need to click on that uh, particular tip and it takes you right to it. So you can make some useful relations or links between the different advice and tips. So the quality, in general, it's good, despite the typos. Everything is well organized and despite the typos, it's well written. You will have no problem at all understanding what is trying to, what is being communicated to you. That will help you survive against monsters, traps, spells, etc. The book starts with an introduction to how this is supposed to be used. It's a good book to print it and perhaps uh, have it uh, close uh, to you because maybe you, your adventurer purchased the book in a certain village or a city and so now the player character can have this book close by and consult it or find some references to better tackle or solve different encounters. They even tell you how to hear the voice uh, as the information is being communicated to you. Uh, you are supposed to, to be hearing this as if this halfling known as Maximilian Sparfoot is communicating his experience, his uh, wisdom on how to survive. He is uh, quite a halfling rogue, so he is not very ethical in many of his uh, suggestions and tips. He's probably chaotic neutral or perhaps even with evil tendencies. Maybe neutral evil, who knows. So, well, uh, nonetheless, uh, the, the entire content will make you chuckle and perhaps even laugh a bit. The consistency of the humor is not too, too firm in, in getting uh, you to laugh. Uh, because, for example, when I read the Knights of the Dinner Table uh, comics, I'm always laughing almost all the time. But here uh, you're going to be perhaps chuckling and smirking and perhaps you will ha get out uh, a laugh or two, but the humor is just, uh, it's good. It's not like the, the best of the best, but I would say that it's, it's good humor. Well, and then after giving you an introduction to this book, uh, you start uh, getting into different uh, tips and advice on how to solve different uh, dungeon related situations and adventures in the, the wilderness and such, because this covers pretty much everything that you could see in a fantasy adventure. Now I'm going to try to give you a small summary of different points so you can get a good taste of what is presented here. So, for example, 
it tells you how not all dungeons are dungeons. You will find mm, castles, mansions, uh, swamps, forests, mountains. Uh, so it tells you to be always um, expecting the unexpected. It also talks about uh, choosing dungeons to explore, uh, considering party numbers, and always uh, taking friends and allies. And here is where you can see the roguish aspect of Ma Maximilian Sparfoot, because uh, he many of his advice and tips involves sacrificing others to save yourself. So saying things like you have to, if something is chasing you, uh, perhaps trying to hit someone behind the knee so that he falls down and the beast or monster attacks that fallen comrade and you get away. So he gives that um, uh, somewhat evil and, and funny advice. But there are also some, some useful tips that you could use without getting the rest of the party members angry at you. So you have more information on how to establish a base of operations and knowing your role, he divides roles in a party as striker, someone who deals damage, protector, a tank or someone who defends others, controller, someone who is there to paralyze or um, put enemies to sleep or somehow send them to some other location. You also have support, which uh, is in charge of enhancing or bolstering the party, adding different bonuses to attacks, defense, uh, perhaps healing, of course, and the everyman, which is like a catch-all term that you could use uh, for someone quite average in his uh, role within the party, almost like a jack of all trades, master of none. And here is where the book, well, I can't pinpoint the exact place where, where it happens, but the book gets somewhat surreal because this actually feels like it's a guide to be used in real life. That is, despite the fictional elements, uh, Maximilian is talking to you as if you're actually going into a dungeon in real life. So it gets quite surreal. I, get, I think that um, RPG sessions that will benefit most of this book are those that are, that are on the extremes. That is, systems that are high on simulation, like for example, oh, of course, Hackmaster. Uh, the, probably the pinnacle of simulation in, in fantasy role-playing games where everything is taken into account, uh, getting tired, uh, suffering trauma or shock from wounds that you take, um, as, uh, having the difficulty of perhaps sleeping on the floor because of all the blood or the corpses that you have uh, scattered all over the place during battles, and many things like that. So uh, in games like that, in systems where you can do pretty much almost anything that you can think of in real life and it is represented with solid rules, this book is great for those systems. But because of that, it's also great for systems that are a bit more loose or, or you know, light on the rules or that allow for the game master to improvise uh, all sorts of situations that are not covered in the rules. So those systems that are kind of in the middle, that have some rules but do not allow certain things, they will not benefit too much from um, through dungeons deeper but as a skillful game master as a skilled game master sorry you should um, be able to accommodate whatever the player is trying to do so in general through dungeons deeper feels surreal because sometimes it feels like they are talking to you as if you are playing a game and other times it actually feels like they're giving you real life advice so you have more information on planning your delve, improvising, uh, be wary of rumors, uh, how to spot, for example, red herrings, um, how there could be many entrances to a dungeon, how to advance only when ready, um, how to uh, carry out like small expeditions and uh, how things could change if you leave. For example, this is very important in mega dungeons that are just huge environments and sometimes you go out because you need to go to the village or the city and you come back and all of the factions are restocked in their uh, manpower or orc power or whatever you are facing. You also have information on considering these uh, factions and dungeon ecologies, um, deciding the loot, uh, how to split the loot, um, dungeon, how to handle dungeon hazards. They actually have some really useful tips. Uh, there's one that I, I didn't I haven't seen put in practice, and, and not when I was uh, playing some session or when I was running things. And this is basically, if you have a really strong character, perhaps a barbarian or perhaps a minotaur or an ogre in the party, you know how 
Nowadays, there are many monstrous beings joining the parties of adventurers. They could basically rip off or rip out a, a door from a dungeon section and use it as an improvised shield or to push enemies uh, back, perhaps in a very narrow dungeon corridor. That sounds pretty useful. There are also some uh, useful but funny tips because, for example, Maximilian, the halfling, suggests that you use the strongest and best armored dwarf in the party as a sort of like a substitute for a barrel if you're using like a, a, a lever to open like a gate or something you could put the dwarf on the floor and put the lever on top of the dwarf and just uh, <laughs> push down to open or at least to, to, to lift up that gate so that the strongest party member can get his hands under that gate and perhaps lift it so <laughs> That's uh, somewhat funny. You also have information on always having a escape plan, um, mapping things as you go, and never trust map sellers. How to use the right light sources, scouting ahead, watching out for pits, how everything is a potential trap. They also talk about, Maximilian talks about um, combat encounters, and here it also gets quite surreal. He talks about some combat formations, um, how to consider certain things, who goes in front, how you could get ambushed from the side, and here uh, he's talking in terms of miniatures, so this is going to be highly useful for uh, grid-based games, and at the same time it, it has that pull that some, you were feeling like you were re reading a real survival guide and suddenly you remember that you're reading something for a game, so it's a very interesting feeling. You also have information how to uh, keep taking notes, uh, wearing armor, carrying weapons, um, you know, preparing like uh, adventure kits, and never splitting the party, and searching almost everything. One thing that I like that I'm glad that they didn't do is that they never mentioned the dungeon master or game master. That would uh, I think uh, would break that balance of. A game and reality because if Maximilian suddenly started to tell you that you should be careful because the game master or dungeon master is going to do this or that, uh, it would take a bit of the charm uh, out, uh, away from the book. So there are just many things, many tips. I'm, I'm just going to read some of more titles about them and give you more thoughts on the contents because you have tips on how to search almost everything and knowing your opponents, never underestimating anything, uh, recover your ammo, uh, use all of your senses. It also talks about uh, constantly using uh, non-player characters like uh, hirelings and henchmen to like to activate traps or to drink uh, potions, drink potions that you are not sure if it's poison or some sort of uh, cursed liquid and how to basically use them as fodder. And this happens all the time in, in role-playing games. Mm. I remember that one time I had this druid and in, in my group and she I was running the game and she would always send her animal companion into the rooms to trigger all the traps. <laughs> that was quite cruel of her. So they do that all the time. So you have more information on how to fight wisely, use blockades, uh, healing up regularly. Mm how there are always rats, they even talk about how to cook rats and eat rat on a stick, how you could have like um, providers of rats in, in, on sticks in a dungeon or whatever. You also have information on how to identify loot quickly, all sorts of things related to magic and enemies, how you should never stick body parts in strange holes, how to limit explosive usage and never to make deals with enemies. Uh, and you also have tips on how to swim and not getting too greedy. That is uh, not getting yourself into nasty situations because you want more treasure. And, uh, and that you, sh you shouldn't always be a murder hobo, but don't always. It never says that never be a dungeon, a murder hobo. There are uh, moments for that. So basically we have 78 tips and after that you have another section which is called what you should know about assassins badgers barbarians and this is really funny it makes fun of many fantasy stereotypes and even archetypes uh, pretty much about anything doors clerics dragons goblins half orcs they make some really funny jokes about orcs and uh, never take pies from orcs <laughs> more information about uh, rangers 
um, the undead, how to destroy uh, a leech, uh, how to defeat elementals, uh, many things about gelatinous cube. I like, really like that section where they talk about gelatinous cubes because they tell you things like if you see um, this dungeon section or corridor and there are like weapons floating in there, it's probably a cube. Or if you are walking and suddenly you, you hear this uh, strange noise and suddenly the, after that you do not hear anything else, you are probably inside the cube. <laughs> Many things like that, how to reveal invisible enemies, mm, things that you shouldn't pick in a dungeon, especially if they say something like, pick me, they have like a little sign telling you to pick it up, mm, what you should do, um, how to handle cursed items in a very roguish way. You also have a top 10, which could also serve as uh, random generating tables uh, for adventures, like uh, essential backpack items, mm, uh, top 10 parties that never made it back. I think here they make some uh, funny jokes to some um, game companies. You also have uh, things always found in dungeons. Uh, game companies and, and adventures in, um, in a funny way, nothing uh, too serious. Like, for example, in parties that never made it back. And one of the, those is the, the Barrow Mazers, because Barrow Mazers are pretty deadly in Mega Dungeon. And then uh, you have a section on rarest magic items, uh, things found in monster bellies, types of hazards, types of traps. You also have notes of the halfling, like uh, there is even like a message in code or cipher. And you also have notes, a section of notes where you can write your own stuff. So what do I think on through dungeons deeper? Let me move to the title. I forget the, the complete. Oh, here it is. What do I think about Through Dungeons Deeper, a survival guide for Dungeoneers? Mm, this is a really a good book. As I, as I said, I think it's going to be very useful for system, systems that are high on the simulation side, but also for systems that are a bit more loose and allow for many sorts of actions. Because I think beginners those that are just perhaps getting started with Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder and the like, will ignore many different things to survive and they will lose many player characters. And reading this book will actually um, get their chances of survival uh, quite up, will improve their opportunity to survive. But th because there's a lot of comedy in the book, you will not be able to apply all of it. Or if you do, you will get uh, the other members in the party mad at you. As I said, because uh, this uh, Maximilian um, pre is pretty much willing to, to sacrifice everyone in order to survive. So I don't think those tips will be too useful. They are just there for uh, some comedy. Although if you are playing uh, a game of, of evil adventurers, it could be... You could probably use those tips, but uh, those are for experienced role players, not all of, all of the uh, groups. Um, enjoy that type of evil party experience but most of the book it actually contains good advice to survive battle um, spelunking and, and getting into all sorts of situations in crypts caverns all sorts of environments and for game masters i think this is going to be very handy because perhaps you could use those comedic or funny elements to play some red herrings or some funny stories and rumors within the adventure. And because this book contains many tips on how to survive traps and combat encounters, you could use it uh, with a twist. As a game master, dungeon master, you could make things more difficult trying to um, give the players little to no opportunity in solving some difficult situations that they will probably have to um, think outside the box this is going to be especially useful for experienced role players. So I really recommend uh, through Dungeons Deeper, a survival guide for Dungeoneers. My only criticism is that there are several typos, but uh, the content is quite enjoyable. I think this is something that you should print right away as a player to keep uh, close to you when you are adventuring. And even uh, for a game master, because maybe the player characters are attempting something and you do not know how to handle that situation. Uh, through Dungeons Deeper, it contains a lot of information on how to have uh, smooth encounters and how the characters interact with the different environments, traps, puzzles and the like, and you will be able to, if not using the rules uh, for your system of choice, you will be able to make some 
improvised decisions or good calls on that. So definitely recommend that. If, sorry, <laughs> definitely recommend it if you're looking for a survival guide, either as a player uh, to triumph, to obtain riches and glory, or as a game master if you want to make things a bit more difficult for uh, your players, or you you are not always certain on how to handle some of their uh, wacky ideas. Uh, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.